In this video, I'm going to show you how I designed and built lighting for my 3D printer. I'm working on a time-lapse system, and adding this consistent lighting made a big difference. It's also great for checking in on your prints late at night. I designed it to attach to these Z-axis brace rods to light the platform without too much obstruction from the print head, and it also makes them easily adjustable. I'll share all the files in the video description below. I started off by measuring the LED strip, the outside edge, the size of the LEDs themselves, and the spacing between the LEDs. I brought that into SolidWorks and started modeling the part. I sketched the basic outline of the LED strip and the LED, then extruded them to the proper thickness. After patterning the LED, I had a model to design the rest of the fixture around. Looking down the length of the LED strip, I started sketching the profile of the channel that will hold it. I made sure to leave clearance so that it can slide in and out easily, and I paid extra attention to the top edge, which will control the angle of the light coming out of the channel. I'll be printing the channel and the clips separately, so at this point I cut a few holes that will be used to attach the clips later. Looking at the cross-section of one of those holes, I started sketching out the clip itself. The most important dimensions here are the inside diameter, which has to closely match the rod that it's going to clip onto, the thickness of the clip, which will affect how flexible it is and how easy it is to attach, and of course the dimensions of the base so that it fits well into the channel that we made. Adding a few chamfers as a finishing touch, now we're ready for some test prints. Now I just need to slice the model and it's ready to print. Whenever I'm designing something like this, I always print a small section so that I can test any critical dimensions or fits before printing the entire model. The clip snaps right onto the rod, and the channel fits on as well, although we can tighten that up a bit. Next I wanted to test the light. Given the size of our test print, I taped off all but one LED. The goal was to make sure that the light covered the print bed, but was also constrained enough so that it doesn't shine directly in your eyes when standing near the printer. The hard plastic of the clip damaged the paint on the rod, and it was on there so tight that multiple clips on the final fixture would be difficult to adjust. I decided to use some TPU material, which is flexible. I made some design changes with the new material. I basically doubled the amount of material around the clip, and I also undersized the inner radius. Both of these changes are to make sure there's enough grip with this material that's much more flexible. I also added an outward draft to the part that connects to the channel. Given the flexibility of the material, I'm hoping to get a nice press fit. The TPU print came out really well. The flex makes it easy to attach, and since it's rubber-like, after you move it around, it'll hold its position. After I had all of the test prints working, I printed the full-size parts. The outward draft and snap fit made assembly easy. With the fixture assembled, it was time to move on to the electronics. These are all the parts that I used for the build. I started off by inserting the LED strips and cutting them to length. The light strips are going to be wired in parallel. I started off by tinning the pads and then soldering the standard black to negative, red to positive. Then I used some heat shrink to protect the connection and repeated this process for the other light strip. To get power to the LEDs, I'm using stranded speaker wire. Using the layout of the control box in the 3D printer, I roughly cut the wire to length, leaving a bit of slack. Then I stripped a few millimeters off the end of each wire. I soldered on these connectors as an easy way to attach and detach the light strips so that they're not permanently wired to the control box. I twisted the strands together and then let them absorb enough solder to make a strong connection. Placing the solder right at the point where the iron meets the wire causes it to soak in and quickly creates a great joint. Again, I used heat shrink to protect the connections. It's great as long as you remember to put it on the wire before soldering. I'm not gonna lie, I had to re-solder a few of these because I forgot to put the heat shrink on beforehand. It's really easy to use with whatever you have handy, whether that's a lighter, the barrel of your soldering iron, or a heat gun. With the cable assembly done, it was time to wire it to the power supply inside the control box. I took out all of the necessary screws to remove the lid in the back so that I could access the terminals on the power supply. I also made sure that the power plug was removed. 
I need to get some proper connectors, but for this I just secured some solid core wire into the terminals. Then I threaded the connector out through a hole and closed up the control box. Then I reattached my Raspberry Pi, which I used to control the printer through a browser using Octoprint. I also have it wired up to turn the printer on and off using a relay. Finally, it was time to plug everything in and test the lights. Since the LED strip is hardwired to the power supply, whenever the printer turns on, the lights will turn on also. Overall, I'm really happy with how this project turned out. For about $5, I have some nice hassle-free lighting.